So in 2003, I was featured on the official Jackie Chan Kids fan club page. I, along with many other kids of the early 2000s, sent him letters and artwork that would be posted on the site, which is still posting news here and there about Jackie. And growing up as a Chinese American adoptee, Jackie Chan was like the biggest mainstream Hollywood star of Chinese descent, and thus the grown-ups around me thought it would be beneficial for me to watch his movies and look up to him as a role model. I cannot stress this enough that Jackie Chan was not my role model as a kid, but imposed on me by the adults in my life. But even so, I did enjoy watching his old Chinese language films like Drunken Master, as well as his contemporary films like Shanghai Noon, Rush Hour 1 and 2, and many others. Not to mention Jackie Chan Adventures was honestly so good and lives in my head rent-free. But this fan club post haunts me to this day, not only because I was bullied mercilessly in school for it, but because Jackie Chan, it turns out, is not the good-natured guy he plays on screen, and yet had all of these real-life kids across the U.S. and admiring him as one of the only mainstream celebrities that look like them. So in this video, we'll detail Jackie Chan's rise in the Hollywood mainstream and talk about the allegations against him. And before we start this video, I just want to say that the premise of this video was inspired by Kyla Says' series on her channel, How the Internet Fell Out of Love With. They're really great videos, so go check them out. So without further ado, let's go. Here's why the internet turned on Jackie Chan. We are ready. Part 1. The Rise of Jackie Chan and China's Soft Power so Jackie Chan came to prominence in the U.S. in the late 1990s due to the cult classic Rumble in the Bronx, and then achieving box office success with the buddy cop comedy Rush Hour co-starring Chris Tucker. And this movie was required viewing in my household. The late 1990s and early 2000s was filled with Chinese-inspired media for kids like Mulan, Sagwa, Jackie Chan Adventures, and even Ni Hao Kai Lan. I don't know why this was besides the fact that China was becoming a larger economic power, surpassing the U.S. as the world's largest export in 2008 due to the U.S.'s financial crisis. It could even be said that this was China's attempt at soft power and influence before the days of social media. This all culminated in 2008 with the Beijing Olympics, which Jackie even recorded a song for, We Are Ready. Post Rush Hour, Jackie had a chokehold on kids' entertainment in the 2000s, not only with his own kids' TV show, but voicing Monkey in the Kung Fu Panda film series and starring in kid and family-friendly films like The Tuxedo and Karate Kid. But he also continued to star in more adult comedies like Shanghai Noon and Shanghai Nights and Around the World in 80 Days. In all, he cemented his name in Hollywood quite literally as on June 6, 2013, he printed his hands and feet at the TCL Chinese Theater, formerly Grauman Chinese Theater, in Hollywood. Not to mention he has his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, inaugurated in 2002. Out of the 2,750 stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, only eight of them are actors of East Asian descent, as of 2023. Generally speaking, Jackie Chan achieved mainstream Hollywood success that many actors can only dream of. His story follows this American dream narrative of an outsider who made something of himself in the quote-unquote new world. But but it's important to note that Jackie Chan had a prolific acting career in China and Hong Kong before his Hollywood story began. He was one of the Seven Little Fortunes from the China Drama Academy at the Peking Opera, where he studied acrobatics, martial arts, and acting. Chan has been acting since he was a child in the 1960s and has starred in over 150 films, at first as a stuntman and then breaking through as a comedic actor and even a singer. A true triple threat who put in grueling hours the Peking Opera where he recalled how the masters pushed the kids' legs against the wall to force them into splits. I think it's important to remember that he had a career before Hollywood and that his previous work is just as legitimate as his U.S. acting career because Hollywood is not the end-all be-all to movies and film. At the same time, gaining that legitimacy from one of the world's dominant industries and institutions is really important because of the power Hollywood holds. In 2016, Jackie Chan was given an Oscar by none other than his longtime contemporary Michelle Yeoh and said in that speech that his father always asked when he was going to get an Oscar and how that, not his homegrown domestic feats, would prove his success. My dad always said, son, you get so many movie out, a war in the world, when are you get one of these? It makes me sad that Hollywood and the Academy has this power to make and break careers of actors and artists around the world, but it also shows how important the Oscars are internationally. Even though the Oscars are very local and US-centric, in many countries around the world, getting an Oscar is a huge honor because of Hollywood's global influence. By being recognized by your peers, it breaks down the stigma that artists from outside of the non-white English-speaking world are somehow inferior. 
And Jackie Chan always knew what he wanted. When he was taking roles in Hollywood in the 1990s before the success of Rush Hour, he refused roles where he would play a villain because that's not how he wanted to be portrayed. He held out for a good leading role and eventually got it. He was one of the lucky few who was rewarded by the system. Jackie Chan as Chinese representation in Hollywood, though born in Hong Kong, was significant as East Asian faces were and continue to be few and far between. And because of his charm and novelty, a lot of people in the US fell in love with him. I mean, his fan club page is filled with fan mail and fan art and a site dedicated for kids to learn more about him because clearly he was influential to many of them. Whether it be because of his comedic persona, martial arts abilities, or just general vibe, adults and kids alike felt like they could relate to him and also found him aspirational and many still do. However, in recent years, things in Jackie Chan's personal life have come to light that make many view him unfavorably at best and a piece of shit at worst. Part 2, The Allegations, Falling Out of Love. So Jackie Chan's personal life is very complicated. Before we get into the family stuff, let's first quickly talk about Michelle Yeoh's joke about Jackie on David Letterman from 1997. In this interview, Yeoh is promoting Tomorrow Never Dies, where she plays Wai Lin. She calls Jackie Chan a male chauvinistic pig, and the audience groans and even boos her. She later clarifies and says that Jackie thinks that women should stay home, but not her, because if he says that to her, she'll kick his butt. No, French, actually he's a male chauvinistic pig. <laughs> so I say this to it, you know, mm -hmm. to his face. You know, he always believes that women should stay at home and cook and don't do anything and be the victim and da 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 da. Except for Michelle. Except for Michelle now, he says, because mm -hmm. I would kick his butt. This didn't really go anywhere until recently, as we'll see soon. And important to note here, Michelle and Jackie have acted together in Kung Fu Panda, but initially met in 1985 on the set of a Guy LaRoche commercial. This seems to have been a joke and they seem to be on good terms now and Michelle Yeoh even thanked Jackie for being too busy to film everything everywhere all at once as the movie was originally written for a male lead and the writers envisioned casting Jackie with Michelle as his wife. Michelle Yeoh said Jackie Chan did her a huge favor for rejecting the lead role in the Oscar winning movie Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yeoh's part however was originally written for a man and the film's directors Daniel Scheinart and Daniel Kwan known collectively as the Daniels envisioned Chan in the role with Yeo as his wife. However, Chan said he was unavailable, so the lead role was rewritten. The actors also suggested that the decision for Chan to turn down the part was mutual. But as we'll see now, there's a grain of truth in every joke. And before we get into it, many people still don't really know or believe this stuff about Jackie Chan because he is still so beloved, at least in the US, and remember for being that goofy Chinese guy with the accent who does kung fu. I mean, he was even going to be given the lead role in Everything Everywhere all at once. Can you imagine? So firstly, there's Jackie's relationship with his son. In his 2015 memoir, Never Grow Up, Jackie recounted an incident where he had been considerably violent while admonishing his son JC, who was 36 at the time of publishing. He said that he had hit JC once and was quite heavy-handed, directly lifting him up and throwing him onto the sofa. And apparently his son was only two years old at the time. That time I really scared him and his mother to death. I myself was very regretful. This was only the beginning of their sordid relationship. Later on, when JC was 32, he went through a massive drug scandal in 2014 in Beijing for the possession of 100 grams of marijuana. He spent six months in prison, the full sentence. It should be noted that in East Asian countries like China and South Korea, marijuana is not something they take lightly and carries heavy sentences and stigma. Therefore, JC's career and reputation took a huge hit. Not to mention that Chan at the time was an anti-drug ambassador for the Chinese government, and thus his reputation was also stained, and he had to publicly admonish and apologize for his son on multiple occasions. This only estranged them further. JC now lives in LA and owns a tequila business called Los Siete Angeles, and I wonder if this is a reference to his father's Seven Little Fortunes opera troupe days. I couldn't find any evidence to support that, but that's my headcanon. In 2011, when JC was 29, his father said publicly that he'll be donating half of his money to charity when he dies and none to his son. And this was even before the drug scandal. Chan said, if he's capable, he can make his own money. If he's not, then he'll just be wasting my money. 
Can you imagine your dad just publicly embarrassing you like that? Chan also revealed that he wished he had signed JC up to join the army when he was younger to temper his character. Unsurprisingly, Jackie is infamously known for being a workaholic and not making time for his family. You don't become as famous and wealthy as Jackie Chan is by spending time with your wife and kids. After the statement about giving his money to charity and not to his son after his death, people online thought or at least joked that Jackie was actually dead. To these rumors, Chan responded, I'm not dead, though I'm so busy that I might get worked to death. Chan, as an adult, adheres to this idea of work till I die and that being aspirational. JC, on the other hand, has been accused of being spoiled and part of the nouveau riche second generation in China or Fu Ar Dai. Even if Jackie isn't helping him out directly, JC still benefits from being Jackie Chan's son and being born into this wealthy inner circle. And I think this leads to a generational clash between the two on top of Jackie just not being ready to be a parent. Because of this perceived softness JC has due to being born in two very different conditions from his his father, who was a son of a cook and political refugee, and because of his father's mindset of needing to work all the time to secure this empire and make a name for himself, it leads to awkward tensions between the two, and at worst becomes violent and emotionally estranging. I also believe part of it comes from the fact that Chan grew up away from his own father who lived in Canberra, Australia as head cook for the American embassy, and at six years old, Chan started his life at the Peking Opera. I just don't think Chan had a family dynamic to reference, nor was cut out to take on the responsibilities of being a parent due to the fact that he's a very career-focused person, whether it be because of his own personal drive or knowing what it was like to have nothing or a mix of both, it undoubtedly had disastrous consequences for his relationship with his family. But honestly, maybe he just doesn't care because clearly he wants to create this legacy for no one but himself and himself alone. And this becomes even more obvious when it comes to his illegitimate quote unquote or born out of wedlock daughter. In 2023, a video surfaced of Jackie Chan watching clips of his old movies and crying beside his daughter, except as many pointed out, that wasn't Jackie's real daughter. Instead, it was a clip from his latest film, Ride On, where he looks back at his old movies with actress Liu Hao Tsun. At one point in the film, Lao portrayed as Jackie and Xiao portrayed by Liu watch some of his most memorable stunts from his acting career with footage from Jackie's real-life cinematic journey used for the montage. Jackie's real daughter is Edda Nung Chok Lam, who is now 24 years old and married to her wife Andy Autumn. Chan cheated on his wife with beauty queen Elaine Ng Yi Lei, who is 19 years his junior. The affair became public in 1999 with Chan making a public statement saying, I have made a mistake that many men in the world make. And according to many sources, while Jackie is estranged from Etta, he actually disowned her before she was even born. In his 2015 memoir Never Grow Up, Chan said that after apologizing profusely to his wife and son, JC, his infidelity was never mentioned again. In the memoir, Jackie also admits to being a real bastard and that he would try to change his ways. At the time, it was reported that Jackie cut off contact with Elaine as soon as he heard about her pregnancy and it is believed that he has never met his daughter nor offered any financial assistance in her upbringing. Etta confirmed to E! News in 2015, the same year Jackie Chan's memoir was published, that Jackie does not have a role in her life. She said, he's my biological father, but he's not in my life. He never existed in my life. I will never regard him as a father. As long as I have my mother with me, I don't need my father. Two years later in 2017, Etta came out as gay on Instagram and the following year, she and her girlfriend Andy Autumn uploaded a YouTube video where they revealed that they'd been left homeless because of their quote-unquote homophobic parents. Her mother Elaine has denounced her daughter's claims. I feel that if they have no money, they should go find work. Sound familiar? They shouldn't film a clip telling others that they're broke and who Edda's father is. People all over the world work hard and don't rely on someone else's fame to get money. She was quoted as saying by a website Coconuts, which is a social media platform. Maybe this is just a generational thing where older parents expect their kids to make their own way in the world, but if your kid is homeless and starving, maybe you should do the right thing and help them out and not embarrass them on the internet. In October 2022, photos of Edda queuing for free food in a soup kitchen were published by an Asian news site 8days.com but Annie took to the Chinese social media site Weibo to dismiss speculation that they were homeless. She said that their life is blissful and that there's no need for outsiders to worry. So thankfully as of 2022 it seems as though Jackie's estranged daughter is doing well even though she doesn't have supportive parents. There seems to be this pattern where Jackie's kids are being given this rhetoric that they should be able to pull themselves up by their bootstraps and get jobs and not need to depend on their family for money which I guess is fine. I mean we have enough Nepo 
babies. But at the same time, if your daughter is suffering financially, if your son is estranged from you emotionally, maybe it's your job as the parent to self-reflect on your own actions. It kind of just shows how little you care as a father that you don't care about your own legitimate son and thinks that he should have gone to military school. And then when you mess up and get a woman pregnant, you refuse to even acknowledge the child that you had with them. Like, what is up with that? I mean, I guess it's a personal choice whether or not you show up as a parent, but to not even give financial support when they were a baby to set them up for success, I don't know how someone could be so cruel. It just shows to me that he's in it for himself and himself only. For someone who plays such a good father or at least mentor on screen, someone who can grow and change and who's empathetic, Jackie Chan certainly isn't that. Part 3. Adored Abroad but Hated at Home So one common theme that kept coming up in my research was the fact that a lot of people in the U.S. and the English-speaking world don't know about Jackie Chan's personal life or political beliefs. Mainly those in the U.S. know him for his Hollywood films, where he plays a cool guy, spy, or a goofy hero. I think the darkest role he's known for is Mr. Han in 2010's Karate Kid. And because of this, he's able to maintain this kind of lovable persona for Western audiences, but in Hong Kong, his home, he's mainly known for being a womanizer and political antagonist. As for his womanizing, it has been rumored that Jackie Chan is a serial cheater and that he brings young women from clubs to hotels. And I didn't find too much about this other than comments on forums but in his 2015 memoir he did own up to being a quote-unquote jerk and a cheater and obviously as we talked about he cheated on his wife with a woman 19 years younger than him. Maybe he's changed now with the way he treats women I don't really know but it is one of the continued reasons why many in China or at least Hong Kong are put off by him as they're more subjected to news about him and his personal life whereas in the US we only really hear about him when a new movie is set to release. But what is more concrete are his alienating political beliefs, and this is the main reason why many of those in Hong Kong don't see him as the hero he is in the U.S. Since the early 2000s, Jackie has been a supporter of the Chinese Communist Party, believing in the One China policy. In 2004, he called the outcome of the Taiwanese Democratic elections the biggest joke in the world after the Democratic Progressive Party candidates won their re-election against the conservative Kuomintang Party or Chinese Nationalist Party. Important to note, Taiwan was the first country in Asia to legalize same-sex marriage. During the 2008 Beijing Olympics, Jackie Chan derided pro-Tibet protesters who tried to block his Olympic torch relay in London. He said, I just want to say, please understand, they're just some naughty boys. They just want to be on TV. They know if they can get the torch, then they can get on TV. And that's the wrong thing. They misunderstand. The 2008 Tibetan uprising against China left 23 protesters dead. In 2009, Chan questioned the idea of a free press and said that Chinese control was a positive thing. I'm not sure if it's good to have freedom or not, he said at a conference in 2009. I'm gradually beginning to feel that we Chinese need to be controlled. If we're not being controlled, we'll just do what we want. Echoing similar sentiments that were expressed during the time of the one child policy that I talked about in my own video about it here, that people need to be controlled and that that's a good thing. In 2009, he worked with the Chinese government as an anti-drug ambassador supporting President Hu Jintao's declaration that illegal drugs should be eradicated and their users punished severely, and this ended up affecting his own son and his relationship to him. From 2013 to 2023, Jackie Chan was part of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference representing the literature and the arts. And in 2021, he declared publicly that he wanted to be a member of the CCP. In 2019, he even criticized Hong Kong's renewed pro-democracy protests in a televised 2019 state TV interview, reiterating his pro-China stance and expressing hopes for the city to return to peace. The recent events in Hong Kong are sad and depressing, Chan said. Hong Kong and China are my birthplaces and my home. China is my country and I love my country. And this is all fairly ironic considering he was born in Hong Kong but now aligns himself with China. Why is this? I don't really know but if you want to do well in China generally where there's a lot of money to be made it's wise not to upset the hand that feeds you. Uh, 
in the end, Jackie is still beloved by millions around the world despite his controversial political beliefs and spotchy past with women and his family. He's even more beloved in countries that don't really follow his political beliefs or really know anything about China at all, but just know him as that comedic martial artist. I do think that he benefits a lot from how the US views Chinese and East Asian foreign entertainers as less than human, as just these artists who solely exist for your entertainment and who are detached from any inner life, who have a funny accent and are there to be goofy and not to be taken too seriously. It's a double-edged sword in that Jackie Chan clearly has suffered racism in the US and Hollywood for his accent and broken English and Asian-ness, but that also makes him like dorky and approachable, like the dorky and approachable foreigner. There's something disarming to US audiences about this outsider, and he gets to kind of hide behind that preconceived notion and hide his personal life. And I want to make it clear that I don't think this is intentional, but that it's a byproduct of xenophobia where non-Chinese speaking audiences and non-Asian audiences are only shallowly invested in Chan for what he does for them, and therefore are ignorant to him as a human being outside of his celebrity persona. Him being a foreigner also makes people, principally his foreign fans, more protective over him. They see him as someone to infantilize and coddle because of his accent. It's again this unconscious bias that English speaking audiences have that see non English speaking artists or those with accents as somehow less smart. Think Gloria from Modern Family. It's again this paradox when it comes to non Chinese audiences who mainly see Jackie as a strange foreigner and because of that love and protect him while staying incurious about him as a person or human being. And though that's wrong, Chan has widely benefited from that ignorance as his misdeeds and real personality has only begun to recently surface in the past few years. Before I finish up, I want to acknowledge that I'm aware of the optics of this video, like just the title is giving your fave is problematic, and that's not what I want this to be. I'm not here to be that guy from that one Onion article who gets pleasure from telling people that John Lennon hit his wife. I'm not happy that Jackie Chan, one of people's most beloved stars, who's a childhood fave and who at one point was the second highest paid working actor in Hollywood, just behind Robert Downey Jr., is an absent father and husband who willingly works with the CCP. Though I've had had personal beef with having Jackie Chan shoved in my face since I was a kid and have been haunted by that cursed image for decades, I wish he was the good father and mentor he plays on screen. I think we can acknowledge the barriers that he overcame to get to where he is while simultaneously recognizing the active harm he's causing to those around him. Whether or not you can still enjoy his work and separate the art from the artist is up to you. In the end, I think the main takeaway from this video isn't that you should start hating Jackie Chan, though feel free to do so, many people do, but more so that we should be wary of putting anyone on a pedestal because humans are just too complicated for that. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know what you thought of it down below and thanks and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.